So now we're going to take the next step. Remember, we started off with a very simple dashboard. We built a query, built our dashboard and published it. In our second demonstration, we then took that existing dashboard and I showed you how you could build a new dashboard based on that. And those two dashboards came from a query. Now in SAP Business One, particularly SAP Business One version for HANA, we have what we call a semantic layer. And a semantic layer, that's the technical term for it, but basically it's just a way of representing the underlying data. It's just a way of simplifying all those relationships between those tables and presenting you with a very simple way of looking at that data. Let's now go and build a dashboard using the semantic layer. So how do I do that? Again, same scenario. I'm just gonna shrink down my menu. I go up here to tools. I go to my dashboard designer. This time I'm starting from step one. So you'll see, I actually have the queries that I've done before. So there you can see I've got some customer queries, but then I've got my semantic layer. And the semantic layer is broken up into analytic views and calculation views. I'm going to choose an analytic view. And in this particular instance, I'm going to choose a sales opportunity view. So what this is doing, this is a semantic layer, which is being designed to show us all of the sales opportunities in the system. So if I'm the sales manager or a sales rep, I can get pretty much all the information I need about all of the sales opportunities sitting in the, same, in the system from this one semantic layer. And there you can see, I have all these different values that are in the semantic layer that I can choose from. I'm fine with that. I really don't want to change that. As a matter of fact, when I'm working with the semantic layer, at this point, I can't change it. But I can go in with another tool that I'm going to show you in a little while and edit the semantic layer. But for now, I don't want to do that. So that's the semantic layer. I click OK. Now, I'm back now to editing my dashboard again. And it's exactly the same process, except with the semantic layer, I have a lot more information I can look at. I have a lot more measures that I can look at and a lot more dimensions that I can use, including now date-driven dimensions. And these date-driven dimensions also include what we call aggregates. So for example, each of my sales opportunities might have a closing date. But now I might wanna look at my sales opportunities by month or by quarter or by year. Now, rather than me having to write any kind of complex query statements or anything like that, what the semantic layer does is pre-built those aggregates for you. And you can see here, I do have my closing date. I do have closing month, closing quarter, closing week and closing year. So no matter which way you want to look at these by date, that's automatically built for me. So let's say... I am interested in looking at my potential revenue amount. So I'll simply click and drag that across because that's my target measure. So there's my potential amount. And let's say I just want to do a quick forecast by quarter. All I have to do is grab the closing quarter and drag that across here. And now you'll see there I have it, my forecast, what have I got that's going to close in Q2? What have I got that's going to close in Q4? And all I need to do now is just save that the same way I did in those other queries. And I would call that um, forecast by quarter. I'm going to take it one step further. I'm going to look at something a little bit more complex. I might want to say, show me uh, my forecast by salesperson by quarter. Again, same scenario. I go here, I find my salesperson, and there we are, sales employee. Drag that across, and now I've got, actually in this case, sales by quarter by salesperson, but by simply dragging the quarter underneath the sales employee, now I can see Sales employee, Bill Levine, Q2, Q4, Brad Thompson, Q2, Q4, and so on. Now I can take that one step further as well. If I wanted to, 
Let's say my salespeople sold across territories. Well, I could drag the territory up here and then I could see how much each of my salespeople was selling into each territory and what quarter it was going to close on. So you can really get quite, um, for want of a better term, quite complex or quite detailed dashboards being built. Let's say I don't want to look at it by quarter. I do my forecasting by week. Again, simple situation here. I go up here and I look at my predicted closing. And as I hover over each one of these, I can see predicted closing date and predicted closing week is here. I drag that across and now it's actually going to show me in each of my week numbers in the year by salesperson when are those deals going to close. So this can be really handy if you want to start factoring this into cash flow forecasting and start factoring in things like um, you know inventory forecasting, production forecasts, because what I can then do, I'm also able to start pulling in other values from my uh, semantic layer that are also included. So if I wanted to see that by customer now, I can simply drag the customer information across here. And now I'm seeing that by salesperson, by week, by customer. So I'm getting a really detailed view and not to labor the point too much, but I can, for example, go and remove the sales employee and now I'm getting sales by customer by quarter or forecast by customer by quarter. When I've got it exactly the way I want, again, the same scenario, I just go ahead and save that. Now, here's an interesting point. You'll notice down the bottom here, I've got a little slider. This allows me to limit this. If I only want to see my top five, I can just drag that across and you'll see that number going down to top five. I release it and now it just shows me my top five based on the measure, which is the potential amount. Okay, I can now drag that across and I can say, show me my top 30, all right? But then the dashboard starts to get a little bit busy, all right? But for most people, what they're looking at, they only want to see, you know, a top five, top 10, top 20. But there are other ways of grouping these together. So you can have top five and then another dashboard, which is, you know, the next five, um, top five, bottom five, whichever way you want. So you've got total flexibility there. Let's finish this off. I'm going to just adapt this. I'm going to take out the um, date value. And in this case, now I'm looking at my forecast by customer. Again, I can simply sort that on the basis of the value, largest to smallest. And there I have forecast by customer. And I'm going to save this now. I'll go and save as. And I will say, let's make that a little bit easier. It automatically defaults in with the name of the underlying query or semantic layer. So I'm going to call this forecast by customer. And then I'll say, OK, that's now done. I'll say finish. And let's just the sake of completeness, let's add that in here into our cockpit, open up my menu, drag across another dashboard widget, and say settings, choose my forecast by customer, and say OK, and there you have it, forecast by customer. Now, I might think, you know what, i got too many bar charts here. I just want to go in and quickly and easily make a change. I'm going to just do that to show you how quick it is without me sitting here explaining everything to you because I think you'll be able to follow along. Go to my settings. There's my dashboard. Choose manage. Select the dashboard. Edit. I'm going to go up here, change it to being a pie chart. There it is. 
that's what I want. Now I'll save, and that's just gonna overwrite that existing dashboard, and then I'll say finish, and okay, and okay. And now all I have to do is go in here and click on refresh, and what do you get? We now get our new dashboard, except in this case, it's a pie chart. Again, I wanna move these around a little bit just to make it a bit easier to read. So I'll just drag that across. I'm gonna move that up here onto the side and I'll drag that down. And there you go, there you have it. I now have another one of those dashboards and let's just move that one more bit just to line it up. Okay, so there's my third kind of dashboard, except this dashboard, remember, I've built this one off the semantic layer.